Welcome to this tutorial on extracting RLCG parameters using ANSYS SIWAVE CPA. In this video series, we'll walk you through the process of using ANSYS SIWAVE CPA to extract an RLCG model of a power delivery network on a package. We'll use the channel setup and smart pin grouping techniques to identify hotspots and any flaws in the design. These CPA solutions help electrical engineers detect hotspots and optimize routing in their design and thus improve performance leading to cost-effective packaging down the line. This tutorial consists of multiple parts. This part, part one, will focus on introducing CPA, the problem setup and smart pin groups. Subsequent parts will deal with RLCG extraction. CPA stands for Chip Package Analyzer. It's used to probe design frailties on interposers, packages, and PCBs. CPA is a fast and accurate RLCG extraction tool. It offers both 3D finite element and method of moments Q3D solvers. The output RLGC model from a CPA simulation also includes a physical layout itself in a format compatible for use in chip tools. Thus, CPA fosters co-simulation and system-level electrical analysis of chips, packages, and boards. Here's a package model in ANSYS SIWAVE. This is a fairly complex design with 10 metal layers, 18 power nets, and over 600 signal nets. In this video series, we'll set up this package to calculate frequency-dependent RLCG parameters. To set up the package, first assign solder balls to the BGA and solder bumps to the die. So, in this dialog, under Pad Stacks, choose BGA. Set solder ball type to simple. Enter the height and radius. So here, the BGA height will be 0.45 millimeters and the radius will be 0.297 millimeters. Observe the placement and terminal type. These options are pre-selected depending upon the pad stack you pick. For instance, if you select the die pad stack, the placement and terminal types are automatically set in advance. Now edit these fields as shown to assign bumps to the die. Here the die height will be equal to 0.08 millimeters and the radius will be set to 0.057 millimeters. To see the balls and bumps on BGA and die respectively, adjust the layer visibility and maneuver the geometry. Zoom in on the design. Here are the solder bumps on the die pins. These are the solder balls defined for the BGA. We'll concentrate on the power and ground nets. The next step, manual pin group creation, is not required. Nevertheless, it's worth taking a look since it'll help us comprehend the benefits of smart pin groups. In SIWAVE, you can create pin groups from this dialog. From the part name dropdown, choose die. Select the nets. Click the checkbox, create pin groups for each net. Press this button to generate pin groups on the die. During simulation, CPA automatically creates pin groups on the BGA. However, if you create your own pin groups on BGA, the solver retains your definitions in the simulation. Notice the pin groups D1 underscore ground is the largest with 1,775 pins. VCC int is the second largest. Traditionally, this is how we configure models for extractions by manually creating pin groups. The problem is, it does not consider any electrical criteria for grouping the pins. We can't set tolerances with respect to resistances. The hotspots might be lost within a pin group. If a group has several pins, finding weaknesses becomes daunting. Handling big pin groups with arbitrary resistances poses problems. Take VCC in with nearly 1,200 pins of non-uniform resistances. What if some of these pins are poorly routed or placed? What if they have high resistances? This traditional method masks hotspots and vulnerabilities in your package. 
you're only going to see the effect of average resistance for VCC int across these 1,187 pins. You won't know where the outliers are. Alternatively, even with a grid-based method, how do you know that your chosen grid size is optimal? For all you know, in each cell, you may group many pins with fluctuating resistances, so again, you lose critical information. Vulnerabilities in your design remain unexposed. Here's where smart pin groups come into the picture. It's a clever way of automating pin group formation with comparable resistances. These smart pin groups are automatically generated from a hotspot analysis. We'll cover this in more detail here and the next part. All this will become clearer after we go over a few more things. Under simulation, click Compute RLCG to open this dialog. Use CPA channel setup. Set the extraction type to RLCG model, then click Next. Include die in the analysis. Under die info, make sure that pin grouping is set to none, that is per pin. Save settings and close. Open options. Set model type to package. Under net processing, use current net selection for simulation. In the CPA dialog, select hotspot die pin group generation. Enter tolerances for partial resistances of pins in a group. Specify maximum number of pin groups. Click Next. Select the die components for hotspot analysis. We have the option to include embedded CAP models, but that's not necessary. Generally, DCAPs have two to four pins only, and their impact is negligible in a hotspot analysis, so we'll leave them as is, that is, ungrouped. Our main focus is die. On the VRM setup, enter supply voltages for the individual power domains connecting to BGA. The supply voltages are for reference only. They do not impact the RLCG extraction or smart pin group formation. Treat them as placeholders for the extraction flow. Since we know the exact values, we'll enter them here. But the extraction is independent of these voltages. They will, however, impact your system level analysis downstream. Save settings and launch the hotspot analysis. Once the hotspot analysis is complete, we are presented with this dialog. Click OK to load the smart pin groups and overwrite existing pin groups. The smart pin groups are produced. Each group is prefixed by smart G followed by a distinct number. In total, we have 500 smart pin groups here in line with our tolerance. Some of the smart pin groups are big, but that's beside the point because the key is that all pin resistances are comparable in any group, so outliers won't fall through the cracks. Know that the goal of smart pin groups is not to reduce the number of pins in a group, rather, it is to form pin groups smartly so that each group consists of pins with nearly similar resistance properties dictated by our tolerances. Consequently, hotspots will be exposed this is in contrast with the traditional method where groups are comprised of pins of disparate resistances with potential exceptions buried in them. To sum up, we began with a quick word on CPA. We assigned solder balls and bumps to the BGA and die on our test design. We saw traditional and smart pin grouping techniques and advantages of the latter. Finally, we ran a hotspot analysis. This concludes part one. In part two, we'll run an extraction to further illuminate the benefits of smart pin groups.